Eric Suzanne, I just spoke to fire crews here. They tell me that the fire did start at the laundromat. It's called Coin Laundry. This is right next to Bennett Auto Supply. You can see there are about five fire trucks here from Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. We should first say that those two teachers will not receive the bonus from the 2015-2016 school year since those tests have been invalidated, but they will get to keep the money they've earned from the years prior. Police right now are searching for a man and a woman who are likely related to him. Dominic was last seen right here at 1230 yesterday. This is his mother's house. If you want to give us a call, check out the number on your screen. It's 561-882-0859. Now that's the number right there that you can call. We're here to answer all your questions. That's right. And 66 of these dogs are being sent right here to the Humane Society of Vero Beach, saving dogs like little Alice here from being slaughtered and eaten for dinner. Good morning. Right now, most of the damage has been cleaned up, but follow me over here because you can see there are pieces of the fire hydrant all over the ground and a gaping hole right next to it where the water flowed in into it. Now this all happened because a car ripped through this area, hit the fire hydrant and then continued going this way and then went all the way until they hit that tree. You can see some of the scuff marks and some blackened pieces of wood over there. But again, this is a drastic change from what we saw several hours ago. Check out this video. It shows water flowing out of the hydrant and the car stuck in the tree. You can see the damage is very extensive. That is where the home once sat. It was physically picked up and then thrown over here. We're going to take you outside though right now so you can see that this line is wrapped literally around the entire building. According to Congressman Lois Frankel, it will cost taxpayers $6 million this year just in added security. The gas is in such high demand right now that this Wawa literally boarded up and rolled out the yellow tape right in front of us five minutes ago. The streets of Miami are full of protesters tonight. Now, this right here is only a fraction of what we saw earlier. They've been protesting for about four hours, and it's all in opposition to Donald Trump. Not my president! Not my president! Marching down the streets of Miami in droves. No Trump, no 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 Nearly 5,000 anti-Donald Trump protesters raised their voices condemning the president-elect. I'm here today to stand for... Uh, stand against fascism, to stand against capitalism, neoliberalism, and to stand for a just society. Protesters marching for miles, shutting down major highways in both directions. Trump is not the only one who's here. He asked on his Twitter for us to march against him or for him if he didn't win. So you asked for it, now you get it. Their main message, the American people have a voice. The changes need to be made. Maybe this is an opportunity to bring a voice to the people and hopefully this will bring some better awareness. Protesters hoping their voices ring out loud enough for Washington to take notice. No violence broke out during the protest, but it is creating a traffic night. I spoke with a man earlier who says two people may be involved. Now, he says he saw the robber run right down this street, hop into a black getaway car that was driven by another person. You'll notice this is just around the corner from the store, and now the entire community is concerned. It's just not safe around here. As Palm Beach County Sheriff deputies comb the community searching for answers into the robbery at a Lake Worth Metro PCS store, Cesar Velasquez is recalling the night from his front row seat. I saw him right here, but it was a mask, no mask. After the shooting, Velasquez saw the gunman running from the store straight to his getaway car parked around the corner. The driver saw he was here. He drove up and he was running that way and he uh, parked right there and he opened the, the, the passenger door and he went in the room. Once the man got into the black car driven by another person, Velasquez went to see where he was originally running from. I walk in the store and the lady, the, you know, she's scared and she's, she's crying and her face bleeding. The robber is still on the loose and until he's behind bars, neighbors are on high alert. Well, it's uh, about 100 feet from my door or less, or well, like 90 feet. So, yeah, it's, that's kind of scary. <laughs> Now, neighbors living in the surrounding community say there's an unspoken curfew of about 9 p.m., meaning they don't go outside after that. Crime Stoppers is still asking for information, and the owner of the Metro PCS store says he's offering a $5,000 reward for any help that they get. Reporting live in Lake Worth, Kristen Chapman, CBS 12 News.
And his grandmother called our newsroom earlier this afternoon saying they have a message they want to share to set the record straight. The family says Jermaine Williamson is innocent and they watched with tears in their eyes as he was placed in handcuffs right here. We good, we good. Wanted for his alleged involvement in a shooting Thursday afternoon. Hey, what are you saying? Jermaine Williamson Jr. turns himself into the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. And I ain't do nothing. I don't know nothing. I love you. I love you too. You heard me? We good. I love all y'all. I love all y'all. Gunshots rang out around 4 p.m. at the Victory Park apartment complex in Vero Beach, sending 33-year-old Douglas Mitchell Ryan to the hospital. And we straight ain't did nothing. The victim, nicknamed Mitch and Williamson, are stepbrothers. Even though that's a hurting thing, of Mitch. I still love him. I don't care. I still love him. And the family believes Williamson is innocent. I believe that he did not do this him. Well, this is a sweet boy. Now they're praying the truth will shine light on a dark evening. Oh my goodness. I mean, I love, I love my son. I love him dearly. He's in custody now, ma'am. I'm sorry. He's in custody where nobody's going to hurt him. For now, we don't know the motive behind the shooting, but Williamson will remain here at the county jail on a $500,000 bond for attempted murder. Reporting live in Vero Beach, Kristen Chapman. CBS 12 News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Kristen Chapman. It's 8.30 a.m. on June 4th. Let's take a look at today's top headlines. Well, we want to see what you're seeing. You can send us your weather photos and videos using the See It, Send It feature on our CBS 12 News app. You can also use the app to track weather anytime on the go. Just click WPEC in your app store. We continue to follow our top story this morning. The terror attack in London just into our newsroom. We're learning British police arrested 12 people in East London following this attack on the London Bridge area. Police saying those arrests made by counterterrorism officers. We're also learning at least seven people are dead following this night of terror. Terry Okita is in the heart of London this morning with the latest. This morning, a family of seven without a home after a devastating house fire. This happened in the 4300 block of Maryland Way near Lake Worth Road and Jog Road. Palm Beach County Fire Rescue says the home is destroyed and they're still trying to figure out what caused it. The family includes an adult woman, five teenagers and an infant. Now to a traffic alert. A reminder if you're heading out the door this morning, Haverhill Road will be closed for the next 10 weeks between Gun Club Road and Southern Boulevard. Crews are replacing sewer lines. This part of Haverhill Road is expected to be reopened by August 11th. 49 artists honoring the victims of a massacre in Orlando. The first look at the fortress dedicated to those killed in the Pulse nightclub attack. New this morning, a first look at the hand-painted portraits honoring the 49 people killed inside the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. 49 portraits created by 49 different artists show the faces of the deadly night in chalk, paint and embroidery. The portraits will be on display until June 14th. Afterward, they'll be given to the victims' families. New details this morning about a plane carrying Vice President Mike Pence last October. The NTSB now saying the plane landed nearly 2,000 feet beyond where it should have. The report also shows the chartered Eastern Airlines flight was going 45 miles per hour when it skidded off the runway. Pence was traveling to LaGuardia Airport in New York at the time. The NTSB did not release an official reason for the landing. Caught on camera, a terrifying moment during Friday night funny car qualifying at the New England Dragway in New Hampshire. Now check this out. Courtney Force was fortunate to walk away unharmed after her funny car exploded. She only received a small cut on her wrist. Look at her cheer. That's unbelievable. Welcome back. The NBA Finals now underway. Game two set for tonight as the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors battle it out for the third year in a row. The teams kicked off the series on Thursday. It was a heated game between the highly anticipated matchup, but Golden State won the first game 113 to 93. Game two starts at eight. Breaking news for you this morning. We just learned that 12 people have been arrested in accordance with that London terror attack that killed at least seven people. We know 48 people so far have been injured. Again, 12 people have been arrested and we'll bring you updates just as soon as we get more. You can always follow the latest developments on our website, cbs12news.com.
All right, now the funeral for Greg Allman, bringing many celebrities to make on Georgia. Former President Jimmy Carter and Cher among those attending the funeral for the founder of the Allman Brothers Band. Cher and Allman were married from 1975 to 1979 and had a son, Elijah. The Palm Beach County KDW Classic, one of Florida's largest kingfish wahoo tournaments, making sure the next generation of anglers gets their saltwater blood flowing. More than 230 boats participated yesterday with more than 1,000 anglers, including our very own Marine Watch 12 meteorologist Jeff Baradelli. He reeled one in, and Josh Brown helped out our director Kayla Schmidt with her potential catch. All proceeds going to the Palm Beach County Fishing Foundation. Of course, their mission is to get families involved in fishing. And then get this, a veteran in Texas was upset over someone stealing flags from his yard. That is, at least until he found out who did it. It was squirrels. Their little animals ripped off the flags off their sticks one by one, rolled them up, and then took them off with them in their mouths. Later, the family noticed a nest made from the flags in a tree. How funny is that? Well, a consumer alert this morning, Harley Davidson recalling about 46,000 motorcycles. The recall covers several models built from July 2016 to last month. The company says a potential oil leak led to two crashes. Google now blocking ads the company considers, well, annoying. The internet giant will ban pop-up ads on its Chrome browser and ads that don't go away when you scroll down a page. It will also block videos that play automatically with the sound on. I'm all for it. Well, a record 230 million people expected to fly on U.S. airlines this summer. Data published in Forbes shows the carrier with the best performances. Well, those include Hawaiian Airlines, Alaska Airlines, and Delta. The report also found the airlines with the most delays over the summer months. And winning that one, Frontier.